What is going on, everyone? I'm India Delgado, your video host. And in today's video, we're going to dive into the Photoshop plugin made for the Stream Deck Plus. We'll be working specifically within the camera raw profile of this plugin. And if you've watched my other video on Lightroom Classic, you'll know that I love using this combination of the Stream Deck Plus dials and the shortcuts that you get with the Sideshow FX plugins because it just speeds up your workflows and makes editing your photos so fun and easy to use. If the Photoshop plugin is not already installed on your Stream Deck, we do have an installation video on our channel that you can review. And make sure that you use the PDF as a guide that came with the download to get yourself up and running. And of course, all of the links and resources that you need will be in the description below. Let's get started with this picture here. I took this earlier in the spring in Montreal, right around the blue hour, and the purple lights within the building really captured my eye. I took a picture, This some of this red sunset in the sky was really looking nice, but you can see that everything else here is underexposed. You can't see any of the colors of the trees, really dark and bland. So let's see how we can get this picture to pop with making some quick adjustments. As I mentioned before, we are going to start off with the camera raw profile on the Stream Deck Plus. So we'll go straight into camera raw. We do have about 11 pages, 10 or 11 pages that you can kind of swipe through here so that you have your most popular and basic commands. But for this tutorial, let's start off with our, on the third page, we're gonna start off with the basic panel. If the basic panel is not opened, mine is not currently opened, all we're going to do is just hit basic, and then you can see that that changes over here on the right-hand side, and now we have our basic panel opened up. Let's start off with just hitting auto and see what auto does for us. So let's come over here. Huge difference right away as auto usually does for us. Immediately we can actually see the trees, we can see the green in the trees, and we can see these all of these details that were previously washed out. This looks great, but I do think now that it is a little bit overexposed and I feel like now the sky is washed out way too much. So let's now dial this in and see how much better or how much I can really get this picture where I really like. So let's go in, like I mentioned, I think that the picture is overexposed. So we have our dedicated shortcuts down here. Temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast. This first quadrant is gonna be for this dial here. The second quadrant, which consists of your highlights, your shadows, your whites, and your blacks are gonna be for this dial. The third dial has your texture, clarity, and dehaze. And then your fourth dial has your vibrance and your saturation. I want to bring down the exposure a little bit. Currently contrast is selected. So I'm gonna tap on the screen. I'm gonna hit exposure. And I know that exposure is selected because we have that little green tab letting us know that that is what's selected. And so to bring down, you'll just go to the left on the dial. To bring up, you'll go up. So let's see, let me move my mouse now. And let's bring this down. Not too much, but just to kind of not have it so bright. So I like how we are looking there. Let's come into our contrast and let's see what we have for contrast. It, the auto adjustments didn't do too much. So if we bring up the contrast and if we bring down just to see what that looks like there. All right, I'm gonna keep it right around here for the contrast. It brought the shadows way up, so shadows is currently selected. Let me see, if we take a look at our highlights, I'm gonna, I selected the highlights, and our highlights, it brought the highlights way down. If we bring the highlights up, yep, that definitely washed out almost all of the red in the sky. So let's bring that highlights down again, not by too much but right around, that's around where it was. If we go into our shadows, and let me see, 
bring our shadows back down. Now we can leave that right around where we were. The whites and the, the whites, I think, let me see. What do we have? The whites, it brought the whites up. So if I bring the whites down for the sky, I want to make sure that I keep some of that red tone in the sky and that red hue. We can focus a little bit more on that in the tone curves as well next. But we have our whites and then our blacks for the trees just to kind of darken some of those blacks. I like how this is looking. So we still have some detail. It definitely brightened it up, not as bright as it was before. So I let auto do its work and then dialed some of that stuff back. If we want to see a before and after, we have our um, two buttons here. I'm just going to hit this one for default because this one will give us a side by side. So this is the before. Look at how dark this was. And we're going to press on that again. And look at the big difference that that made. If we take a look down here on the bottom of the screen, there is all of these details down here that really just get are lost in the original picture. And if we go now, you can actually see that there's these two cars here, the gates, all of that stuff. I want to see if I come in and do let's make some adjustments with our texture and clarity and see what that does. So I'm going to go in and increase some of the texture. Now, if you want to see a dramatic difference, you can see that is just makes it look really unrealistic, like an older style photo. So let's bring that back down a little bit. I do want to have some of the texture within the pictures. If we go and we select our clarity, Bring some of the clarity up. If we bring it down, it's going to make it way, you know, softer. And if we increase clarity a little bit. Now you can kind of mix a difference in the buildings. I do like that. So now let's go in and let's see what we can do with some of the sky. I want to go into my tone curves. So I'm going to swipe over into my curves and let's pop open that panel by hitting the curves. For the curves for highlights, lights, darks, and shadows, that's our first dial. So let's see what we have with our highlights. If we bring our highlights up, now you can see it kind of richens the red sky some more. So let me show you the difference all the way down. So if we go back now to bringing the highlights down, it's this gray dull sky. But if I bring my highlights up, now we get more of that red soft sky that I had that night. Let's take a look at the lights, bringing the lights down. Not too much. It does kind of give you some of the clouds you can see there in the sky, some of that detail. Bringing the lights up takes that all away. So let's bring this back down a little bit. I don't think I want to do anything with the darks and the shadows because then that's just going to take away um, from all the other adjustments we made. So let's I bring it down a little bit. Now let's leave it. And then how about the shadows? If we bring the shadows up, if we bring the shadows down, just to kind of let's do a before and after. This is looking good. Get some detail in the structure, detail in now that ice cream truck, the trees. We can see the colors. Now let's go in and let's see how we can make some of these colors pop even more. See if I can really brighten up that purple and some of these yellows here, maybe even some of the red. So what I want to do is I want to go into my color mixing specifically. So let's click on this color mixing. And by opening up the color mixing, you have a few different ways that you can do it. So you can either continue here by working with your quadrants. So the third dial is your reds, orange, yellows, and greens. And then your fourth dial, your fourth quadrant is your aquas, blues, purples, and magentas. But if we swipe over one more, you actually have a much more detailed control. Uh, and I, I, I think this is really cool when you're working um, with your colors. You have your hue, your saturation, and your luminance, and then you'll select these colors that you want to start working out of. And because I do want to see how much I can change with this purple, I want to work out of this page. Now, you do need to go into the panel and go into this drop down here 
and change it from HSL into color. And now from within, you can see here, we have our hue, saturation, and luminance. And you can see that there's this little white dot on the green that shows us that green is selected. If I wanna go in, I want to immediately start with the purple. Let's hit purple on our stream deck. You can see that on the screen, it highlighted now purple to let us know that that's what we're working out of. And let's increase the saturation. So we're going to we're going to pay attention to this dome here. That's where our purples are. I don't know if it'll make too much difference with this truck, but let's see with the with the the dome, the lights and the dome. So we're in the purple. Let's start off with saturation, bringing that up. Definitely makes it darker. I'm just going to do an a a huge adjustment so you can see what that does. Bring this down. You can see now it makes it a little bit more kind of transparent, that purple. So let's bring that up there. If we go into luminance, let's increase the luminance. If I decrease it, makes it a little bit darker. So let's increase that luminance there. I just want that purple to stand out. And if we go into our hue, make it a deeper purple and let's go back just so we can see a before and after now we're really starting to see that purple stand out that's looking really great and let's see with these lights here those are some yellowish lights so let's select yellow yellow orange ish let's start off with yellow so if we come in and we change you can see now that turned into more of an orange color where it gives a little bit more of like that nighttime tungsten light there. If I come into my saturation, make it a little bit more saturated, less saturated. So we definitely want to go into that higher saturation there. And if we increase the luminance, how about if I decrease it, increase the luminance so I can get some of that bright light there. And again, if we go back, so that the details are, they're popping there. I like this, this is looking good here. All right. And now let's see what we can do with the mask. Selecting the sky mask. So I came back one screen and I have the masking option here. You can open up our mask pot panel. I wanna work out of the sky. So now you can see it did select the sky here. Let's hide the overlay. And now what I want to do is let's work with these parameters because I want to work up and down. Going into the contrast here. And if we change the temperature, we can actually change this all together from red. Look at this. We can now kind of give it a little bit of a bluer tint. There's still some red in the middle here, but if you did want it to look more of that blue sky, you can come over here and make it really blue if you like. Or if we come back, the reds, let's see here. Now I brought up some of that reddish orange there. And if we go down to tint, let's see what changing the tint does. Um, That's too much. So let's leave that there. And if we go down one more to the saturation, let's see what this looks like. And if we want to go into our before and after, there's our before and after. I like the way this looks here. Look at this huge difference that we were able to make using the raw profile of Photoshop. Here is our before and look at what we did using this after. Such a difference with under 10 minutes worth of edits, probably even shorter, honestly, where we were able to bring up those highlights and those colors. Now that you have gone through the quick tutorial on the basic tools of the Camera Raw Profile on 
Photoshop. We want to hear from you and we want to see what your final edits are. We want to know about your workflows, what you love about the plugin and how we can help you. So if you're not already a part of our Discord community, be sure to join our Discord and tag us in your work on Instagram using the hashtag Sideshow Effects. That is how you maximize your workflows and become super productive and efficient in Photoshop using our plugin pack. Remember that the Stream Deck is not just a tool, it's an extension of your creativity. So if you love what you are seeing with our work, if you love the Stream Deck and you wanna get to know more about it and you really wanna take advantage of all of the plugins and tools available, you should look into the Stream Deck Masterclass that I have. There are over 30 lessons where we dive deep into the Stream Deck Excel, the Stream Deck Plus, even the Stream Deck Pedal on getting you to take advantage of your everyday workflows and just become more efficient. And because you're a part of this amazing community, you'll get a 30% off coupon for that masterclass. So use the coupon code Sideshow Effects. Link are in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to my personal channel. You can find me over at India Delgado. And that's where I teach other things similar like this, tips, tricks, tutorials. We talk about gear. I'd love to hear from you. Keep us posted, hit that like and subscribe button. Let us know what you thought of this tutorial in the comments. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out y'all.